Hi there. I wanted to show you one of my very favorite things in our church here in Hampstead. It's a window, which is a World War I memorial window by a woman who was a stained glass artist who lived very close to here, who lived in the parish as far as I know, and whose work isn't really very well known, though the people who taught her became really quite famous in their day as arts and crafts stained glass artists in the early 20th century. This window is tucked away here in the clergy vestry, and so it's a window that I and the clergy and ministers here, and sometimes the servers, see on a weekly, if not more frequent basis. But it's a window that a lot of other people who spend time in the church and who come as visitors might not really get to see. It's perfect for Lent because it really focuses on the pain as well as the hope of the cross. Right in the middle here, there are two angels either side of an empty cross with three nails in the center, behind which is a sun in a sky with a sea beneath. It is a beautiful and compact image of what it is for heaven and earth to be united in an utterly revolutionary way through the cross and the resurrection. Beneath are these amazing crocuses, and they are in different phases of blooming. Some are thinking about coming out into flower. Some are blossoming in the most beautiful way. They are framed by the feet of these angels, which are incredibly delicate as they create this kind of space within which these beautiful flowers can bloom. The way that the flowers bloom at the bottom of the cross suggests a kind of an upward reach. The beauty of the earth and the growth in the promise of spring reaching up towards the glory of God, worshipping as well as simply being in nature. The sun behind suggests the glorious new light of sunrise. The ocean suggests the wideness of the sea like the wideness of God's love and God's mercy. And it also suggests to us something from the book of Genesis, those first moments of creation, when God separated the waters and the heavens and the earth. Finally, looking back upon all of the incredible things that God made, resting and recognizing that all that had been made was very good. And so here, the artist is putting the cross right in the middle of all of that, in a really very small part of a much bigger window. The window is dedicated to someone called Frederick Hefner, and his descendants occasionally come to look at the window to pay their respects and to visit the church. There is a memorial, too, to his relatives, just here, resting beneath the window. The angels on either side tell us a lot about the period within which this was designed, because if you look, you can see that they have extremely stylish early 20th century haircuts. The halos for these angels, with their incredible purple shimmering wings, are a very sensible yellow. In the next part of the window, up in the upper regions, the halos change and they become bright neon, fuchsia pink. Joan Fullylove, the artist for this window, had a great sense of color. She had a marvelous sense of space, and she really deeply understood the profound theology of life and death and resurrection. This is one of the most powerful images I know of what it is for Christ to welcome all into God's kingdom. The way that memory and the crucifixion and eternal life come together in this window makes it particularly appropriate for our Lenten journey and for our Easter life, risen with Christ, at home in God as well. Down along the bottom of the window, in some really beautiful lettering, is a passage of scripture. It's from Revelation 21. They shall neither hunger nor thirst. God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is one of the most important parts of St. John the Divine's vision of the new Jerusalem. This is what it's going to be like when heaven and earth pass away, when the whole of creation is gathered up into God's tender, loving embrace, where God himself will wipe every tear and there simply won't be any suffering or pain anymore. It's amazing 
that that passage down along the bottom is framed by an absolutely enormous series of images strung together which tell the story of the Passion and the Crucifixion. Each of the little images going around the outside of the window in this band of yellow and black and purple tells a little piece of the story of the Passion, those final days and hours before Jesus' death on the cross. There are dice when people cast lots for his clothing. There's the cloak he wore, spear and sponge, ladder. The crown of thorns is in this window as well, right up at the top in the arch. The cockerel that crowed three times to indicate when Peter was denying Christ and deserting his Lord, after which he wept bitterly. Sticking with the story of Peter through the Passion, there is in this window not only an image of the sword that Peter uses to cut off the ear of a slave who comes with a group of people to arrest Jesus in the garden, but also the ear that he cuts off straight above the sword, and it's way up here in the window. So if you come in, you'll be able to have a good look and see what you might be searching for. There are also two extremely moving images of the Passion that are much closer to eye level. One of them is the sponge and the spear connected with Christ's final moments on the cross. The sponge is lifted to Jesus' mouth, soaked with vinegar, with sour wine, in response to him saying that he has a basic human need. I thirst, he says. The other is a spear that is thrust into his side, after which blood and water come pouring out from him in those final moments before he is taken down from the cross. There are some utterly profound moments in Scripture and in our devotion to Jesus in these days of Lent and of Holy Week that are condensed down into these tiny and poignant images here in this window. My favorite is the Sacred Heart of Jesus, just behind me, which is flowing with blood, which also looks a lot like tears. The tears that Jesus, that Jesus' mother, that all who mourn him have cried in the Bible, and that we offer too in our devotion. Sometimes the things that make life absolutely wonderful are also interlaced and interwoven with profound suffering. There is something so deep in being able to rely on the tender heart of God, the tender heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, as well as her son Jesus, to sustain us all, no matter what is happening. So there are a lot of reasons why I wanted to spend a little bit of time with this window and show it to you. I hope that the next time you come into church, you'll have a chance to look at it too, and that if you've seen it before, you'll see it in a new way and that if it's new to you, you'll discover it for yourself.